Hello, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Upgrade Assistant Analyze command. Now, Upgrade Assistant has two commands that are both uh, related to analysis. There's the Analyze command and the newer uh, Analyze Binaries command, which is in preview. So I want to talk a little bit about the difference. Analyze Binaries is slightly more specialized. It specifically looks at .NET binaries like DLLs and EXEs for the .NET APIs that they're using and compares those against the .NET APIs that are available in your target .NET platform, like .NET 6 or .NET 7. This is meant to be the same behavior you would have gotten previously from the .NET Portability Analyzer tool, which is also sometimes called API Port. Users of the .NET Portability tool have been able to use that tool for quite a while now to understand which .NET APIs a particular DLL depends on so that they can understand whether it's likely to work on .NET 7 or not. In order to help consolidate tools, we're rolling that functionality into Upgrade Assistant with the Analyze Binaries command. So now you'll have one tool that will both analyze binaries and do the more general analysis and upgrade operations that Upgrade Assistant already does. The Analyze command, on the other hand, is a little bit broader. It looks at all of the upgrade steps that Upgrade Assistant knows about and is able to extract from them the changes that are needed uh, to, in order to upgrade a particular project or solution. And then those uh, changes are put into a report and generated automatically. It's an easy way for a user of Upgrade Assistant to get a quick look up front at the changes that are going to be necessary to modernize their application. So whereas Analyze Binaries looks very deeply at .NET dependencies, Analyze looks maybe not as deeply, but more broadly at uh, lots of different types of dependencies that might be interesting, anywhere from code patterns, which could overlap with the Analyze Binaries command, but in many cases does not, to uh, NuGet packages and framework dependencies that will need updated to newer versions or different packages, and even some app model specific things like changes that are needed specifically in WinForms apps as you upgrade to .NET 7. So they give different results, and ultimately, the recommendation is to run both commands to get a complete picture of what's needed as you move from .NET Framework to .NET 7. So let's look today at the Analyze command and how we can use it to help understand the work we have ahead of us. I'll go ahead and share my screen here. So this is uh, my command prompt. And in order to use the Upgrade Assistant Analyze command, it's as easy as running Upgrade Assistant Analyze. Uh, now, from here, we would specify the csproj, vbproj, or solution file that we wanted to analyze, because unlike analyze binaries, analyze runs on source. Let's go ahead and start by running help. Here, I'll move over to the side so I'm not covering anything up. And you can see, like I said, we pass in the project or solution file as an input. There are also some options that can be specified, though. The most interesting are probably dash f and dash t. Dash F allows us to specify the format for the report that's going to be generated by the analyze command, and we can choose between HTML or serif. HTML is going to be the most human readable option. It gives a nice HTML report listing all of the um, changes that are, are needed, uh, whereas serif is going to be more machine readable, and it's also useful if you have a serif reader that you want to use this with. Serif is a common standard for um, sharing diagnostic information in a file. It stands for Static Analysis Results Interchange Format. And there's a lot of tools that know how to use that format. It's JSON-based. And so if you're going to be using the output file programmatically or with a serif viewer, of course you would choose serif. And if it's primarily for human consumption, I would recommend HTML. You also can specify the dash T option to specify what target you intend to upgrade the project or the solution to, and that will help you analyze with that particular target framework in mind. So you can choose current for .NET 7, LTS for .NET 6, or preview soon for .NET 8, depending on which train you want to move to as you're upgrading to .NET. There are other ones. Uh, such as dash i, which will allow the tool to run even on projects that Upgrade Assistant thinks it can't usefully run on, such as a web forms project. Um, dash x will allow you to register an extension that will maybe add additional analysis functions because all of Upgrade Assistant's commands are extensible and the community 
or users can feel free to add their own customizations. We'll talk more about that in a future video, but primarily you'll be using dash F and dash T. So let's go ahead and run this command. We're going to run upgrade assistant uh, dash F. Let's start with an HTML report. We'll try them both out. We'll do dash T and I'm actually going to say preview because at the time of recording, .NET 7 hasn't quite released yet. So it's still the preview release. By the time you watch this video, most likely .NET 7 will be the current release. And then I need to specify my uh, solution file. So eShop Legacy MVC Solution. So I'll, oops. Uh, oh, I totally forgot the analyze command. That, that's, that's a very important one. So let's do that again. And we'll say that we are going to be running the analyze command with those options. Now this solution has three projects in it. There's the MVC web app, as well as two projects, which it depends on that are just small little helper projects. One of which has some system web dependencies, one of which does not. Now, as we wait, the tool is going to spin up and unlike the upgrade command that we're going to be using next, the analyze command runs completely unattended. So it's going to put some output here on the console, letting us know about uh, the sorts of items that it's detecting that are going to need to change. And uh, then it's going to generate that file and it will be done. So right now we are going through all of the references in my projects, the NuGet packages, the framework references, uh, loose binaries that I depend on and identifying which of those need changed, which of those upgrade assistant maybe isn't able to change automatically, which is these warnings. And then that's going to be included in the report. Uh, we also will, uh, once this step is done, we'll also run some uh, Roslyn code analyzers in order to look for certain code patterns in the projects in my solution that may require updates as well. So we'll let this finish up. It should be just about done. And now it tells me where the report can be found. It writes it to analysisreport.html. And so we can take a look at that to see the, the final report. And then having written that, the tool should be just about done here. We'll give it a minute to finish up. Okay, so the uh, tool's finished running. Uh, if we just look back through here, you can see, like I said, there's a lot of output about NuGet packages, which are going to need to be updated. So a lot of these system.web references aren't going to work, of course, on .NET 7. So they're listed as items that need removed. Uh, we also will see if there are any NuGet packages we depend on that maybe need updated versions. Those will be called out. So as an example, uh, I know that this uh, solution uses Newtonsoft JSON. Here we see that Newtonsoft JSON version 6.0.4 does not support the, the target of .NET standard, which has been chosen for one of my helper projects, uh, but 6.0.8 does. So it's going to recommend that we make that switch. There are also some warnings here. The warnings will correspond to any packages that are found that don't work on .NET 7, that the tool doesn't know how to update itself. So things like Autofac MVC5, Autofac Web API 2 don't have direct equivalents supporting .NET 7. So this is raised as a warning because Upgrade Assistant recognizes these packages aren't going to work, but it's not something that the tool will be able to automatically fix when we run the upgrade command. So this will require some manual fix up. We also see, uh, if we scroll down, that there are a number of diagnostics for things that are in source where types need changed. And we'll get more information on those when we look at the report. So let's go ahead and open up this HTML report and see what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a little bit so you can see this well. Uh, what we have here is we have three different sections, one for dependency analysis, which is looking at our um, NuGet and binary and project to project dependencies, which um, may need updated as we upgrade to .NET 7. We also have API upgradability, which is looking at our source code and what changes are needed there. And finally, there's component analysis, which will look at app model specific changes we may need, such as updates needed for in a WinForms app as you transition from WinForms on .NET Framework up to .NET 7. Uh, in this case, we've only got the first two types, but if we expand this, I'll zoom up just a little bit so we can see the full path here. You can see that we have things like Entity Framework version 6.2 needs removed because that particular version of Entity Framework 
doesn't work with .NET 7, but if we look down in, oops, sorry, come farther down and look at packages to be added, we will be adding Entity Framework version 6.4.4 because that version does work with .NET 7. So you can see we've sort of listed all the packages that need removed, all the ones that need added, as well as um, references to framework assemblies like system.configuration, which should be removed and replaced now with NuGet packages instead. Um, and then also some framework references to be added. Two of our projects use ASP.NET APIs, and so the tooling recommends that we're going to need to target those at ASP.NET Core instead, so we should have this reference to this, this framework package here. Um, so going through this, we could get a sense of what sorts of changes we're going to need to upgrade our uh, dependencies to be ready to work with .NET 7. Moving down to the API upgradability, uh, we get a view of the changes needed in our source code. So for example, in a lot of our controllers here, of course, we're going to need to replace some types. Types that previously were coming from system.web, like action result, or if we scroll down, control, API controller or controller, now are going to come from ASP.NET Core, so the tooling is recommending ASP.NET Core equivalents that are going to replace those APIs. So whereas before we used action result, that has to be replaced with ASP.NET Core's action result type where before we were using the API controller type, that now gets replaced with ASP.NET Core's controller base. Uh, HTTP status code result is replaced with ASP.NET Core's status code result. And so these sorts of substitutions are identified that are going to be required in various places in our source code. We're also alerted that we are using ASP.NET identity, and that will need to be replaced with ASP.NET Core identity. And we are told that we are using HTTP context.current, which isn't going to work because that property isn't available in ASP.NET Core. So instead, we're going to have to use an HTTP context accessor instead. And finally, we have a diagnostic here letting us know that the bundle config file in our ASP.NET app is using these system web optimization types for script and style bundling, which work significantly differently in ASP.NET Core. And so we're given a link out to documentation where we can learn more about those changes. Okay, so this is what the HTML report looks like. Let's go ahead and run this one more time using the serif output format so that we can see what that format is going to look like. So we're gonna run our analyze command again with all the same uh, options, except that for dash F, I'm gonna specify serif. So we'll let this run one more time here, and then we will take a look at the file we get as output. And again, we're going to get the same uh, console output here because the analysis is exactly the same. All that's different this time is that we're outputting to a different uh, report file format. We're going to output it to this JSON serif format instead of using HTML. While we wait for that, you will need a serif viewer if you want to take a look at this. And we have extensions both for Visual Studio here in the VS Marketplace, you can look for Microsoft Serif Viewer 2022. And for VS Code, there's this Serif Viewer extension for Visual Studio Code, uh, which will allow you to view the Serif files in a richer way inside of um, VS and VS Code. There are other Serif Viewers out there, and of course, the, the file format is a standard, so it would work uh, any place. Okay, so we'll wait for this to finish up, and then we'll take a look at what we get. Okay, so our um, analysis is complete, and now we have a report uh, written to an analysis report.serif. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Like I said, it's just a JSON file, so I can open up VS Code, and we can take a look at it. So here it is in VS Code. And like I said, it's, it's simply a JSON file. Uh, but you can see, because I have that extension installed I mentioned earlier, we also have over here on the right a view of all of these diagnostics within that serif file organized by file that they appear in. Okay, we also can open it in Visual Studio, so let me show you that. If we pull up Visual Studio, and let's see, I will take this folder and I'll just drag and drop the serif file we generated. 
Again, we have the JSON file here, but if you come down and look at the error list, um, oh, you know what? I don't have the extension installed yet. I forgot I was gonna demo that part. So before we look at it, instead of just seeing this JSON, we need to go to manage extensions and we need to search for Serif. And you'll find Microsoft Serif Viewer 2022. Go ahead and download that. Okay. And now it says that it will be installed when we restart Visual Studio. So shut down Visual Studio. It's now going to start up this uh, V6 installer to install the extension. So yes, let's do that. Now it installs. Okay, so the extension has installed. So we will start Visual Studio back up again. And this time, continue without code, when I drag and drop that file, uh, you'll notice that in addition to opening up the JSON file, using that extension now, when we go look in our error list, we're able to see all of these diagnostics as if they were build errors in Visual Studio. So we can see that, you know, ASP.NET identity needs replaced, uh, these packages need updated. And in fact, because we're doing this inside of an IDE, I can double click on one of these um, diagnostics and it will actually take me to where in the code the change needs to be made. And I've got these little squiggles letting me know that, hey, this action result, which in this file is coming from System Web MVC, it's going to need to be replaced with Microsoft ASP.NET Net Core MVC action result. Or this controller base type is going to need to come from an ASP.NET Core namespace as well. And so it's a nice way to view these uh, outputs if you, if you want to look at the reports in the context of the solution using Visual Studio or VS Code. All right, so uh, that's the Upgrade Assistant Analyze command. Uh, as you saw, it's a good way to get a quick overview of what changes are needed in your solution prior to using the Upgrade command in Upgrade Assistant, and it can help you to uh, just sort of understand the work you have ahead of you or any sort of red flags that you might need to go and address prior to doing the upgrade itself. See you next time.